Greetings, comrades. My name is Ben Irvin, and I am the voice of Scottish Socialism and Inverclyde. I tend to see the Westminster elections and the Holyrood elections as asking different kinds of questions of the Scottish electorate. As far as the Westminster elections go, the most important questions facing a Scottish voter revolve around Scotland's status within the United Kingdom. Should we be independent? Should we have more powers? When it comes to Holyrood, the most important questions are what kind of Scotland do we want to live in? With this in mind, how we as a branch approach each election is very different, depending on what question we are answering. As a party, since our inception, we have been committed to independence for Scotland. With the general election in May coming so soon after the referendum, we had hoped that all yes parties would put up a united front and continue to campaign for independence. We were the first of the yes parties to call for a yes alliance to fight the upcoming election. Sadly, this was not accepted by either the Greens or the SNP, who decided to return to party politics rather sooner than most independent supporters would have liked. Of course, it's their right to do so, and given that all of us on the yes side have vastly larger memberships now than prior to the referendum, they probably feel confident that they can do rather well on their own. We are disappointed with their decision. We think that independence for Scotland is more important than party politics. But the SNP do not share that point of view, and so we move on in our own directions. When it became clear that the SNP leadership intended to put party politics before the independence movement, the Executive Committee of the Scottish Socialist Party agreed that in the absence of a Yes Alliance, our party would also stand candidates. And so this has been the question being debated within the Inverclyde branch of the SSP. Should we as a branch stand a socialist candidate for the May elections? The drawbacks of the system used for electing representatives to Westminster are many. First past the post is essentially a two-party system, while Scottish politics is arguably a six- or seven-party environment. The results of such a system being used in such an environment are highly undemocratic, the winner receiving a far higher share of the seats than their share of the vote would justify. The winner becomes overrepresented, and all other parties become underrepresented. The effect is more pronounced for smaller parties who have almost no chance of winning any seats despite commanding a respectable share of the vote. Now add to this the current political environment in Inverclyde. Most commentators expect this to be a straight fight between the SNP and New Labour. Our branch expects, in the future, to be the main opposition to the SNP and Inverclyde, but at the moment we recognise that we have a lot of work left to do to reach that position. We have recently undergone a branch restructuring, our membership is still growing at a steady pace, and we have a fantastic and genuine left-wing programme that we can offer to the Inverclyde public. So we see no reason why in the future we can't compete with the SNP for seats in this area. With Scottish Labour continuing to collapse, I wouldn't be surprised if they ceased to exist altogether. But at any rate, they will no longer be able to cl claim Inverclyde as a safe seat, which only adds to our belief that we can become a real force in Inverclyde politics in the not too distant future. But what would be gained from standing in this election, where the local winner will most likely either be the SNP or New Labour. Arguably, we would split the yes vote and take votes away from the SNP, thereby handing the victory to New Labour. That may be correct, but it's far from a certainty. We know from experience that a lot of old Labour voters, disgusted by that party's continued slide to the right and embrace of neoliberalism, are attracted to the SSP. But even if it is true that we would split the yes vote, should that stop us from standing a candidate? I don't think so. The SNP have no God-given right to be the only independent supporting party to stand here, despite what some of the lunatic fringe members of that party have been arguing. And remember, we offered the SNP an alliance. It was them who turned it down. If protecting the yes vote was really so important to these people, they have to explain why they didn't take our offer when it was on the table. So I'm not concerned about the SNP losing because we split the yes vote. 
After all, logically speaking, they are also splitting the yes vote by standing, so fall foul of their own arguments against us. What I am concerned about, however, is the damage the current Tory-led government is doing to our country, and as a strategy for this election, we have to do what we can to limit the influence of the Tories, both in terms of the policies they inflict on us and their attempts to stop us gaining more powers for Scotland. If we were to stand, and we were to split the yes vote, then this would let New Labour back in. New Labour, however, have consistently refused to rule out going into coalition with the Tories. In other words, New Labour are more than prepared to prop up a Tory government in London. The SNP, on the other hand, have consistently stated that they will not help prop up a Tory government. They will not, under any circumstances, go into coalition with the Tories. It is for this reason, above all others, that the Inverclyde branch of the Scottish Socialist Party have opted not to stand a candidate for the Westminster elections, and advise that anyone looking to cast a tactical vote in May should vote SNP. By defeating the Tories and New Labour in Scotland, we will be setting the foundations for a genuine revival of socialist politics in the near future, starting with the Holyrood elections where we will be standing a candidate. The SNP will still be a big player at these Scottish elections, but their answer to the question of what kind of Scotland do we want to live in is very different to our answer. They will present their vision of Scotland to the voting public, and we will present ours. The voters can then decide which vision best matches their own. Of course, not every branch of the Scottish Socialist Party has taken our line. There will be many branches across Scotland who do stand candidates. These branches have made their decisions according to their own local circumstances, and the issue has of course been debated a lot within the party. But it is our ability to have these debates, and even differences of opinion, and carry on as a united party that grounds my confidence that the left in Scotland is ready to be truly united. There is an old joke in these parts that socialists have to have their meetings over the phone because they can't agree where to meet. A joke, but it highlights a real problem historically with the left, when relatively tiny disagreements led to huge fractures within the movement. As a result, the left has been for too long just a variety of small splinter groups, all adamant that their own particular splinter is a genuine one. In a recent booklet I wrote for the Scottish Socialist Party, I argued that for the left to truly unite, we have to drop this notion of genuine socialism. There is no right or wrong socialism. Instead, there are common values that all socialists share, and we must unite around those values. So I am encouraged by the first steps being taken by the Scottish Left Project, an attempt to truly unite the left in Scotland. I am determined that the SSP should be a real part of this, or any ultimately successful project which unites the left in Scotland. To this end, I have called for a meeting of all progressive groups in Inverclyde to come along and find out more. Keep an eye on our Facebook and Twitter pages for more details as they are confirmed. People's flag is deepest red It's shrouded oft Our martyr dead And are their limbs Grew stiff and cold Their hearts blood died It's a behold So raise the scar at Standard high Within its shade We live and die Though cowards flinch And traitors snare We keep the red flag Flying here The ground the Frenchman Loves its blaze The sturdy German Chants its praise in Moscow's vaults, its hymns are sung, Chicago swells, its surging throng. So is the scarlet standard high within its shade. We live and die, though cowards flinch and traitors sneer. We keep the red flag flying here. Waved above our infant nights When all I had seen dark as night And it's witnessed many as a deed in vile We mustn't change its colour now 
So does the sky not stand that high But then it's shit We live and die Though cowards flinch And traitors sneer We'll keep the red flag Flying Recalls a triumph's past, it gives us hope of peace at last. The symbol breaks the message plain of human rights and human gain. So is the sky that stand that high within its shade. We live and die, though cowards flinch. Country at her steer will keep the red flag flying here. With our heads uncovered, swear we are the bear at arm till we fall. Come dungeons dark or gallows grim, this song will be our parting hymn. So is the sky not stand that high What can it shed? We live and die Though cowards lynch and traitors sneer We'll keep the red flag flying Until next time, power and peace to the people.